Today's scripture passage comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 5 through 17, and it's the birth of John the Baptist foretold. It reads like this. When Herod was king of Judea, there was a Jewish priest by the name of Zechariah. He was a member of the priestly order of Abijah, and his wife, Elizabeth, was also in the priestly line of Aaron. Zechariah and Elizabeth were righteous in God's eyes, careful to obey all of the Lord's commandments and regulations. They had no children because Elizabeth was unable to conceive, and they both were very old. Now, one day, Zechariah was serving in God's temple, for his order was on duty that week, and as was the custom for the priests, he was chosen by lot to enter into the sanctuary of the Lord and burn incense. While the incense was burning, a great crowd stood outside praying. While Zechariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing to the right of the incense altar. Zechariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw him. But the angel said, don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife, Elizabeth, will give you a son and you will name him John. You will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even before his birth. And he will turn many Israelites to the Lord their God. He will be a man of the Spirit and the power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn hearts of the fathers to their children, and he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. This year, everyone came over to our house for Thanksgiving. We're about the halfway point for just about everybody in the family, and so my parents and the in-laws came on over. It was a great time to be together, and this was kind of a a last-minute decision, last-minute kind of audible and change of plans, and this meant that there was a little bit more house cleaning, a little bit more rearranging to get the space the way that we wanted it to so that we could host this many people than kind of we had originally thought. Something happens, though, in the Bishop House when we know that family or, or someone that we know and a friend is coming over whether it's a dozen people or just someone swinging by. We have some things that need to be done every single time. We just need to tidy up a little bit. And so it's a standard procedure for our family to kind of get things ready. And then when we are finally ready to play host, we want the guests to be there like right then, like exactly on time. It's probably more faithful to say that we want the guests to come on our time and maybe not the prearranged time or their time or anything else. We want them to be there on our time. I mean, after all, we're ready, we're prepared. So everyone else should be here uh, when we're set and ready to entertain. It's with that kind of imagery that we begin this season of Advent and preparing for the baby Jesus. We're ready, we're all ready, getting ready for the party or at least getting ready for the good news to come during this season. And so throughout these next few weeks leading up to Christmas, our conversation will center around how we might prepare the way, prepare our hearts. And so our teaching series is appropriately named Prepare the Way. Now, we're also going to be studying and using a book with the same title, written by Pastor Adam Hamilton. And finally, we will have a conversation partner who is a guru of preparing the way from our scripture. It's John the Baptist. Now, truth be told, John might be my very favorite character in the whole of scripture. And I hope a little bit of John's spirit will burn within each of us as we begin to change our pace and make space for Jesus in this season. The King is coming. Are you ready? Adventus is the Greek word for prepare for a visit from the ruler. Like when the king is coming or the emperor would plan to visit a town, there would be a messenger that let the people know that the visit was on the horizon and they would need to get ready. 
you know, it's pre-social media and everything else. So they would send a runner out and this would mean that, that they would fix up buildings and finally knock out those projects around town that had been on the back burner for so long, put a slap a coat of paint on things or even tear down whole buildings and rebuild them so they look better. They would even mint money if, with the emperor's face on it if they had a mint. It was a big deal. And it began with the messenger telling them to prepare for the king. Throughout our season, we will see that our messenger, John the Baptist, didn't come from a random family, but rather his family had been ready and waiting on God to do some incredible things through them for years. They had been prepared for years. John's parents were remarkable because they had spent years in faithful service. John's father, Zechariah, was a priest. He served God for decades until one day when he was tending to the, the temple duties, a once in a lifetime opportunity, he looked over and saw a man beside him. But the only problem was that he was supposed to be alone in this part of the temple as he burned the incense. And he realizes that the man beside him was no man but a messenger from the Lord who said that he, because of his faithfulness, would have a son. Now, I'm sure that a child was a hope of Zachariah when he was younger, but now he was very old. There might be a problem here. Then another messenger came to Elizabeth, who also came from a priestly line and who also was very faithful. She was told that she would have a child, but in the same way, she was old too. Just as an introduction to, to kind of uh, get a picture of what this couple had gone through, they not only had gotten ready and prepared for God to do something special through them, but they had been prepared and remained prepared for decades. And not only had they prepared for decades, but they kept watch and remained faithful. Like that is something incredible in and of itself. Now, remember when I said that our family once the guests to be here the moment that we are ready for them. Otherwise, we go stir crazy or lose our faith that nobody's going to show up at all. I can't help but think that that might have been going through the, the minds of Zechariah and Elizabeth. And yet, the fact is that these two remained faithful through unan what seemed like unanswered prayers. And this is inspirational. Especially when you consider that the first century kind of popular thought was that if you couldn't have a child, it was because God was causing you to be childless because you had been unfaithful in some way, shape, or form. So why not just give up? Is there some kind of resolved, uh, unresolved sin in your life? There had to be something there. But not only do we know differently now because of medical advances, but we also know that both Zachariah and Elizabeth are called righteous in our scripture. So it's like God's trying to remind everyone that the old way of thinking is nonsensical. That's not the way that God works. That's not why we can or can't have kids. And so the time was just not right for them to be the parents of the one who would prepare the way. And God knew that they would be faithful because they had been faithful all along. The king is coming. Will you be ready? And will you stay ready? There's something powerful about Elizabeth becoming pregnant in her old age. In incredible and exhausting, I think. I turned 40 this year and just thinking about doing diapers again and the clunky car seats again just makes me want to take a nap. But when we look throughout the Bible, God often acts in ways that leaves no doubt why this is happening and who is doing the act, right? This pregnancy couldn't have been anything but God. The burning bush could have been nothing but God. The pregnancy of Abraham and Sarah and the, or the deliverance out of Egypt, it had to be a God thing. And so when we prepare the way of the Lord, I believe that it often doesn't happen on our timeline because we need some time to remember that it's not about us. It's about the one who is coming. The king is coming. Are you ready to prepare for him? Preparing happens in all different ways and shapes and sizes. There are advanced teams that go before in, in concert venues to make sure that the space will fit their needs and report back stage sizes so that if choreography needs to be changed, it can do that. These advanced teams set up lighting and make sure camera angles are just on point. They prepare the way. And often before even the, the performer gets into the same town, that advanced team moves on to the no new location and do it all over again, never seeing the show that they are preparing for. 
preparing the way, it might be a form of priming the pump for the show, but it could also be writing a note to a friend to remind them that they're not alone in this season. You know, we're officially in the holiday season, and that means some time with friends and family and wonderful things, but it also means that mental health crisis lines, those calls go up exponentially in this time. Therapists see an uptick in their appointments, and folks just need a little extra care because it's a reminder not only of what we have, but also what's different and what we don't have. And so preparing the way so that Jesus might come into this space in a new way might just mean spending a little bit more time with friends and reminding them that they are special, that they are seen, that they are heard. And so as we both prepare a way for Jesus in our lives and the lives of others in this season, think about how you might make some space for others as well to encounter Jesus differently this year. It might mean that you begin volunteering at the elementary school during lunch or recess to give the, the teachers a break. It might mean inviting a friend to Christmas Eve worship with you or just setting an alarm twice a day to pray for friends and family. This week, maybe even today, I would encourage you to write down and tell at least one person how this season is going to be different. How are you going to make some space to prepare the way of God to work in a new way through you? As we'll see, John doesn't get to see the fullness of Jesus' ministry, but his path and his message are clear, and his life makes straight the path for Jesus to come, priming the pump so that Jesus can do what he needs to do. Jesus is the advanced team, or John is the advanced team for Jesus, and so are we. We're called to prepare the way to make the path straight. The king is coming. Are you ready? We're called to be on God's time, not ours. The king is coming. Are you ready? We're called to be inconvenienced so that we might be the answer to someone else's prayer, a ray of hope in the dark world. The King is coming. Are you ready? Amen.